Alright, hello, what is up? So here I am posting a video even though it is not a Monday. And the reason for that is that recently I felt a bit frustrated that, you know, it takes such a long time from me getting an idea for a video to when I actually post the video. There's a lot of, you know, editing and things like that uh, in between there that has to be done. And I also would like to be able to, you know, post more often and also uh, you know, be able to post videos that are more like in the moment and things like that to kind of push this channel forward a little bit, so to speak. It would be more fun, I think. And <laughs> I thought that one idea to try out is to do a questions and answer. And <laughs> I posted a story on Instagram a while ago uh, asking for some questions. And <laughs> I was afraid I wouldn't really get any questions because I don't you know, have that many people that follow me on Instagram and all that. But I actually got some questions, which I'm really grateful. It's really fun. So yeah, let's get started with that. So the first question I got is the two best fusses for JF Tone. And you know, I think there are three fusses that I tried that are related to Fushant, and those are the JF Fuss by Tringlo Lab. So that is a Fuss Right, Must Right clone or based on the Fuss Right. And I have the Big Muff Pie, the classic, and also the Fuss Factory. Uh, and you know, out of those three, my top pick would be the JF Fuss or the Moss Right Fuss Right. Um, I think that really nails uh, some really classic and uh, unique Fushanta tones. So I think it's really useful and I think it's a, uh, you know, a Fuss sound that John actively used a lot and that you can really recognize. So, and it just, you know, it's so nice to kick that in with the DS2 sometimes to just add an extra flavor to your soloing sound. So that is definitely my top pick. And the second pick isn't as obvious to me. You know, when it comes to the fast right, I feel like that one, you know, it's fun to play with, but it feels like you don't really recognize John's Fushanta sound from that pedal too much. You know, it's not something that you really, you know, associate with his sound. So I don't find it that usable if you want JF tones. Uh, but it's really fun to play around with uh, just in general, so it's still a good pedal, I think. Uh, so because of that, I would say that the Big Muff is my second pick to recommend, uh, because that is useful to, you know, get nice fronted tones. And I have made a video about this, you know, comparing the DS2 with the Big Muff and things like that, which can be interesting if you want more info on that. And the second question I got was the best affordable Wawa pedal between the WH10 version 1, version 2, and version 3, and why? And well, the version 1 has pros and cons. Uh, it obviously would sound the closest to John's sound because that is what he used uh, back in the days. And um, uh, it would also, I, I assume, feel quite good because of its plastic enclosure, which is also its weakness because <laughs> it will break on you quite easily. And the second drawback, obviously, also is the price. Uh, and, uh, you know, it isn't that accessible to get. Uh, and when it comes to uh, the version 2, <laughs> that is a pedal that I have a lot of. And the reason for that is because <laughs> that one broke on me uh, a lot. So I had a lot of problems with that one. and I. I don't know, it feels like it doesn't sound as good as I believe the version 1 would sound and that is based on uh, me using, you know, the WHX from Tumblr Lab, which I still like a lot and is my uh, Wawa pedal of choice uh, as of today still. So uh, I think that sounds a little bit better and it also feels a lot better because, you know, the version 2 with its metallic enclosure isn't that nice to be honest. Uh, not re I mean, after you tried something like the WHX with the plastic enclosure, which is also very durable in this case, uh, you kind of don't want to go back to metallic enclosure, in my opinion at least. And when it comes to the version 3, <laughs> I shouldn't really talk too much about that one because, <laughs> well, I guess I talked about the version 1, even though I haven't tried it, which is the reason I shouldn't talk about the version 3 either. And you know, some people have asked me to do a video about it, but you know, all the gears that I have shown in videos are things that I would have gotten even if, even, even if I didn't make a video about it because uh, I planned on using it, you know, for my own stuff. When it comes to the version 3, I'm not that interested in getting it because I'm so satisfied with the WHX. So the only reason for me to get it is pretty much just to evaluate it and make a video and then perhaps try to sell it, uh, which doesn't sound, you know, it feels like my channel is too small for doing uh, things like that. Um, you know, I kind of want to make videos based, you know, on things I already have and would have gotten anyway. 
uh, but I guess if enough people think that is a good idea to make a video about maybe I should consider it so please comment on that below and let's move on to the next question which is do you know clones pedals that can emulate a low pass filter except the deal for the Moog Fogers from Moog and the FM4 and you know the low pass filter effect is used for the classic Danny California verse filter effect and the throw away your television uh, solo sound effect and you know I can get both of these effects with the uh, low pass filter uh, from Moog you know the Moog Foger low pass filter uh, in combination with the control processor the CP251 and uh, yeah I can get both of those sounds but obviously I had to turn the knobs so I can't really switch between the two with the press of a switch. So because of that I have been thinking about getting the Barbonera from Trungle Lab because I believe that would be able to get me those two sounds as well. And also I really like the small form factor of it, the fact that you don't need the CP251 and the Mogafoger. But I haven't pulled the trigger on that yet because you know, I feel like you know, <laughs> it's really a fin financial thing. I kind of feel like I want to put my financial uh, stuff <laughs> focused on things that makes my workflow more effective so that is kind of my priority right now because I have a lot of pedals and a lot of guitars and all that so now I kind of focus on workflow so that's the reason I haven't pulled the trigger on it uh, for now and uh, yeah the next question is what other style of music do you listen to which is a really interesting question because you know to me it isn't that important that it is a guitar a based genre or something like that you know to me it has always been about something that I connect with and the important thing for me is that you know it feels really really expressive and unique and yeah it's really hard to put into words but you, you know just to give an example for you know for a long time I listened a lot to a Aphex Twin which has nothing to do with guitars but I just found that his approach to music and his unique style and uh, you know his expressiveness and everything was really really inspiring so yeah that is my criteria for if I listen to a specific style of music so it's hard to say a genre but really it's about you know being it being expressive and something that I connect with emotionally you know and the next question is what's your favorite Chili Pepper song and that is a really interesting question that I feel like I can go on a lot of tangents on uh, because you know when it comes to me consuming Chili Peppers uh, work <laughs> I found that I haven't really spent most of my time listening to their official songs you know through the albums uh, but actually most of my time has been through you know live performances because I think that is really where they shine and you know <laughs> I guess all of you can relate to you know those improvisations uh, and the solos and all that uh, that you really can't stop listening to that so for me you know the focus has been more really on my favorite uh, performance just rather than you know my favorite song and also the question is tricky because I've listened to the Chili Peppers for <laughs> such a long time so you know because of that uh, you kind of get used to songs that you like and then you just like them and then you kind of go back to those songs again and then you like them again so it goes back and forth like that you know um, but I think a good example of a really good song is Californication because I think that song really shows the strength of the band because if you think about it what everyone does in that song is quite simple uh, but you know together it creates this really awesome and unique groove so it's kind of you know that synergy effect where 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 44 or something like that it doesn't really make sense what everyone does is relatively simple but the way they interact with each other is really complex and creates this really unique vibe but also if I just answer that song uh, you know it feels a bit strange because uh, I have felt a bit bored about that song because not that much is happening uh, in that song and if you have heard it a lot of times it kind of gets boring but <laughs> I have also like I said before had that experience where you know I haven't listened for that song for many years and then you kind of go back to the studio version because you have changed so much as a person from uh, you know the time when you got bored of the song to the time when you kind of rediscover it again so then it becomes <laughs> then you kind of listen to it with new ears and then it becomes a really good song again so it's kind of interesting how that works but anyway I hope that answer that question and the final question I thought I would answer now is Untitled 6 or Going Inside my favorite solo track by John and I guess the question would be which of the songs 
I prefer. You know, I think Untitled 6 is really cool how everything interacts in a really cool way. Uh, but also a really interesting thing with going inside is that, you know, it is, you know, it creates a style that is very consistent throughout the whole album uh, on, in which the song is part of. So if you kind of get into the song, then you have, you know, a lot of other songs to listen to that are, you know, within the same vibe, which can be really nice because when you get into a groove, you kind of want to continue on that groove, if, if you know what I mean. But with Untitled 6 and that song, it kind of, you know, if you get into that groove, it's a really short song and, you know, the other songs isn't that similar. So that can be a bit, you know, frustrating. <laughs> I don't know if that made any sense or not, but because of that, I would have to say uh, going inside, you know, it's a really, really, you know, that whole album is, you know, it has such a cool sound, you know, really boom and uh, loud and yeah, <laughs> really awesome and unique and expressive album right so that is all the question i will answer for now you know i actually got more question than that which i think is really really cool and really really fun but for now i will stop it here and see you know what response i get to this little experiment if you will and i guess you can also leave more questions if you don't follow me on instagram and you miss out store you know stores are only there for 24 hours uh, so you know it can be hard to time that so if you want to ask another question uh, even when I haven't posted a story about it, uh, I guess you can look up my email on my about page. I don't think it's a good idea to post it in uh, the description because I guess that's how you get spam and all that stuff, I guess. So uh, yeah, look it up on my about page if you would like to ask any other questions. And yeah, I think this was really fun and uh, I'm really curious about your response and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.